Today, it's all about the Pico Kaya farm in Ecuador. Welcome, my name is Patrick and this is Coffee with April. When you see this video, I'll be out traveling in Melbourne and Joe and the rest of the team at April will kind of take over and do some kind of behind the scene video material for you guys. Um, part of that as well is that we, or specifically Joe, was just in Ecuador visiting our partner producers, Ana Maria and Nicolas at the Pico Kaya farm. And we want to start by introducing them properly here in a longer kind of interview video format. And then after that, we're going to introduce small videos and bits and pieces from around the farm. And this is all part of the content that we promise, promised you earlier this year. We want to just share a little bit more about the partner producers that we work with. It's in the end of the day, what they do is the very core of what we do here at April, right? Without further ado, here is Ana Maria and Nicolas sharing some of their insights and most important points on running the Pico Kaya farm. Hi, my name is Ana Crespo and I co-own this farm uh, with my brother and my family. It's a very interesting business slash hobby slash passion. Uh, we are a family farm and we put a lot of love and passion of what we do. Hi there, I'm Nicolas, Anna's brother. I'm 25 years old and I do the fun part in the farm, which is production. So we are a team, I produce, my sister sells, and yeah, we are enjoying as much as we can this project. It's a family project and we are really committed with it and really passionate about it. I've been involved with the farm uh, since 2018 when I finished my undergrad and the most engaging part for my part of the job is to discover new roasters that share the values and that are willing to communicate all the hard work and to go beyond just coffee that we put a lot of effort, we put a lot of work. There's uh, much more in the process to get to a good coffee. And we want our partners to communicate that and to work with us to communicate that to the world. So after my sister got involved, um, she was looking for new markets, new clients and relationships, but she needed a uh, hand here in the farm. Uh, me as a family member, um, it, it was just something that I wanted to do to help my family, you know. And uh, I'm a studying production engineer, so I have a lot of, of knowledge in processes and standardizing. So I decided to come and take a look and I fell in love with the coffee production. It's an incredible process since the start to end. Uh, it's a hard work uh, uh, task and it takes a lot of, of, I don't know, skills to, to have, to manage a lot of people there and work with, with a lot, a lot of people. So at first we started with Tipica, well, Sidra, Pacamara, Ethiopia, uh, some Bourbon and Katur. And after a few years, we decided uh, to, for example, leave Bourbon, but now we are more focused on Sidras, Pacamaras, Tipicas and Ethiopia, mainly. For us, and I think we, we have the same opinion, Sidras and Pacamaras are, are the most beautiful plants up there. I mean, they are easy to, easy to take, uh, they are easy to work, they are strong, and they look really, really good up there. So also uh, in the copying, we, we, we love them. They are special for us. Uh, also, we start, the, the project was started with Sidra. So that's why we have a lot of affection with it. And yeah, we, we are planning to plant more Sidras in the next few years. So this land is not only accurate and good for the plants as weather, soil, um, and general conditions, the climate. It is also very dear to us because we 
grew up here pretty much when we were kids. So it's not just about the perfect microclimate for the coffee, but also the, the special feelings uh, we have for this. Yeah, I think it's also a special, very special land. Uh, we are next to the Hokotoko Foundation. So it's an international reserve that it's uh, preserving some endangered extinction animals there. There is a bird called Matorralero, which is living, it's our neighbor actually. And also he, sometimes he comes to the coffee. So we are trying to protect them uh, as, as we try to protect nature. We, we are environmentally friendly and I think you've seen some, like a lot of insects and living there. So yeah, also the ficus is a native tree. Uh, we didn't cut the ficus there in the coffee fields. Uh, they are nature, native from here. And I think it's a big important part of our coffee plantation. Uh, ficus are not friends with that many trees in the area. But surprisingly, they are friends with uh, our coffees. So it's a perfect environment up there. Uh, and it, it's a very special microclimate we have. As my brother said, we are very respectful with nature and we try to keep a balance as much as we can. Um, if you come to the farm, as, as you have seen, we have a lot of biodiversity in there. Um, especially we have uh, spiders that are spider, golden web spiders. They're beautiful if you go up close with them. We try to never take them down. We will take another route, even if it's longer or we take um, a lot of time to avoid them. We, we believe that having those spiders, insects, butterflies, we have a lot of butterflies, it's a sign that we're being friendly and we're respecting that that was their place before and we want to live in harmony with them. We also get a lot of inspiration from nature. For example, we named Golden Honey after those spiders. We have also tried to communicate that through our marketing. So a lot of the insects and the um, birds that live up there are part of our image. They are in our um, sometimes our logos or our patterns that we use in the boxes. So we're trying to communicate that as much as we can and, and being in balance with nature. It's very important for us. Okay, so our next step is to build a new wet mill close to our house uh, so we can have more control. And also uh, we are building it from scratch in a new land, different everything. Uh, it's a big project. We are trying to make the work for the people easy. Uh, it doesn't mean like they are going to get lazy. It's just a helpful uh, way to do more in, in less, um, more clean. Uh, everything will be better for, for everyone. So we just started with the dry room uh, because it was our first uh, uh, it was the first thing on the on the goal. So yeah, we built uh, two years ago. We built a new dry room, um, but we are experimenting. So it was too big. Uh, the last year we had to move it, make some change, and this year we've got a much uh, effective dry room. Uh, it's lower and it's smaller. So. We are controlling temperature and humidity. We have some sensors there. I am buying some engines to make uh, automatization. So the people don't have to be there every time, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can, I, can, I can have a hand with technology also. So yeah, uh, I'm building some stuff to also have the access of data information abroad so I can control Again, temperature, humidity, which is the most important thing for us in the dry room. Uh, we try to create the airflow from down all, all the way up. And we are in the dry room, everything is on a single bed level. 
we're trying to standardize that. We don't want at different levels. So the whole room should be the same environment, the same for everything. And yeah, we're working for it. Uh, hope we can have uh, everything there soon for the next year. So as anything, we've been learning a lot with the years and we realized it would be much beneficial for both the roasters and us to know more about our coffee so we can understand uh, the profiles, how they're roasted. So we are looking for roasting samples here ourselves and analyzing in contact with the roaster so we can understand more what we can improve with that. So we want to keep a, a process that goes from harvesting all up until roasting so we can have a better understanding and um, with that we can work better with our roasters understanding more from our side. For me I think it's very important that people understand how much work is put behind or into coffee. Like when we were discussing that a day of, of production here will mean only one box. And that's a whole day of 14 people working for the coffee. So we really want to work uh, with roasters and with clients that taste our coffee that appreciate what is on that cup of coffee. That's very important for us to, to get to know. Yes, uh, there's a hard work behind it. It's not easy. As you can see, we need a lot of people. We are having uh, a problem with that this year, uh, but we will fix it somehow. And yeah, 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 it's it's a it's a hard work, and I'm, I'm glad you are uh, showing uh, everything. I'm glad you came, and I'm glad you see everything. As you can see, we are transparent. We don't hide anything. You've seen everything. Sometimes there's factors that we cannot control. Um, it can be logistics, it can be problems of weather, it can be people. But what we look for is that to work with that difference with our roasters and we can find a way, a middle way in which both can work. Because sometimes, as you saw in this harvest, sometimes it's late and we have nothing that we can do to control that. Um, but what, uh, what we do and we promise is to find solutions and to work together to find a way to solve it. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be um, easy, but I do believe we can both adapt and find a way to solve it. Uh, we are super thankful with like, uh, I will say with you later, my, my sister will say the, her thing, but yeah, it's important for us that you came to understand what's going on here. Uh, I'm really glad because you were really curious about it and you were, um, you got involved in everything. So uh, now you have a better understanding of how we work. And that's uh, like from my side, I, I have peace now because you know everything. So yeah, I'm really glad you, you, you were here and, and watching everything. Um, and also I want to thank to all the people that take the time to understand a little more about coffee. We really enjoy doing our work, but it wouldn't mean anything if our final clients doesn't enjoy the same um, by understanding everything we do here. So thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, going a step further into knowing our farm. And I hope you feel the same passion and love we put in the coffee when you drink it. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.